we can always find our way to a fun moment, even in the shady bunch. What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you like this video. This is your review for Ready to Love Season 4 uh, Reunion Part 1. So listen, this might not be that long. Um, we start this episode off. We talking about we're talking to Chris and Amber. Chris and Amber are still dating. Okay, we went through the whole thing with you know what Chris went through last season and we brought them together and Chris said, you know, he was open to dating other people and he didn't want to make the same mistake that he made last season where he just focused on one person, even though that's what he ended up doing, but he really did try to date other people. Um, but you know, Amber was just the one they clicked at like the second event and that's just where his attention was and it worked out. I mean, they still, like I said, they're still dating. You know, they, they seem to be in a good space. You know, both of them seem happy. Okay. And then we had the whole situation with Kyra and Ashley, honey. So Kyra and, I mean, not Ashley, Kyra and Alexis, child. So Kyra, so they started talking about Kyra and how did Kyra become everybody's favorite? You know, when did that happen? How did that switch happen? And... Alexis was like, yeah, I'm interested in finding that out, too. And Kyra was like, well, you don't need to talk to me. You need to talk to the, to the men. And Tommy sounded like he was irritated because Tommy was like, well, let's be clear. Because Kyra said it made it hard because after that happened, there seemed to be a whole switch with the ladies. Like, even amongst the ladies, they were just kind of giving her the side eye. And it was a problem. It became an issue uh, once all the guys started, like, really picking her. And... Tommy sounded like he was irritated because he was like, well, the reality of the situation is it would have never been an issue if somebody didn't say something outside of my lounge. Like, once we saw it on camera, it wouldn't have mattered because the season would have been done by then. But the fact that somebody, Ron, decided to share that information, it threw a lot of stuff off because people were privy to information they weren't supposed to be privy to. So that was a problem. Then we had the whole, then we got into Kyra and, um... I wrote Kyra and Ron in my notes. Oh, Kyra don't like Ron. That's what I was trying to put up in my notes. Kyra said that a lot of this came back down to the fact that Ron was hating because her and Ron, they, Ron tried to talk to her like outside, like before they even came on the show. She ain't, you know, she, she didn't, she rebuffed him. And basically, she felt like a lot of what he was doing was on some get back or on some, you know, Kyra ain't ish type situation. Because she was like, I don't like him. He don't like me. And that's what it is. So, um, and I can kind of see that because after we see some other stuff with Ron, Ron just got a lot of stuff with him, y'all. Ron, mm. so then we meet Christian and Khalil. Remember, Christian and Khalil were the first two to get sent home. So Christian is, I like Christian. Christian is a sweetheart, but Christian just seems very awkward. But we find out that he's been talking to Andrea. Now, remember, Andrea was one of the first ones to get sent home as well. Um, and they've been talking on the phone, but he hadn't asked her out on a date. And so Tommy was like, well, would you be interested in going out on a date? She was like, yeah, I would love for him to ask me on a date. And so Tommy was like, dude, ask her. And he was like, right now? Tommy was like, yes, right now, ask her on a date. And so he ends up asking her, but again, it's so awkward. He was like, would you be interested in having a conversation with me after the show? Because I would like to talk to you about maybe going out on a date. <laughs> I said, now after all that, she better say yes. Even if she don't mean it, she better not embarrass this man. But she did say yes, and so that was cool. Then we meet up with Khalil, and they show us some footage of Amber trying to talk to Khalil, asking him what his biggest flaw is or like he felt like the biggest mistake he's made on personality flaw and he kept saying toxic women toxic women toxic women and she was like no that's not a character flaw about you that is other people what about you like are you not trusting do you not return for like what is it with you and he just kept saying toxic women so you know at that point it's like listen sir don't nobody have time for them kind of games. Go sit down somewhere because nobody got no energy for it, okay? 
But we found out that um, him and Ida have been speaking. Now, Ida immediately got an attitude because she was like, oh, I thought we wasn't going to do that. And he was like, well, what you mean? She said, well, I when I said something about us letting everybody know that we seeing each other, you were like, no. He said, well, no, I was saying just keep it keep it under wraps until the reunion. She was like, well, you didn't have my permission to share that information. And I was just like, damn, Ida, okay, man. But I understand where she's coming from. If she said something to him about telling everybody and he was like, no, and then he just decided to let everybody know without having a conversation with her, I could see her being irritated about that. I could see it being a problem, right? Um... So then, Mr. Ron, listen, we were talking about, we talked about Chrysanthemum and Ron. Chrysanthemum, no, Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum. I know I'm saying it wrong this time, but I used to say it right before, but Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum. Chris, she said that she was kind of blindsided by the whole situation with Ron and Alexis because... She said that she felt like Ron had been telling her the whole time that he was her number one. He was her, you know, that she was his number one. And so when she got eliminated, that's kind of where her attitude came from because she was like, well, this whole time you've been telling me that I'm the number one. And now all of a sudden I'm being eliminated for a woman that you act like wasn't even on your radar. And he was like, well, you know, she wasn't on my radar. Like she kind of, you know, rose in the ranks, so to speak. But because, you know, Chris was like, well, I mean, I met his mom. Like, and so, of course, everybody was like, huh? She met your mama. And he was like, well, I mean, she lived in the same neighborhood. And, you know, I thought they would get along. And they was like, hold up, Ron. You got to understand that when a woman meets your family, it means something to them. So if y'all out here dating, you kept telling this woman she was your number one. You done took her to meet your mama. Yeah, her getting eliminated probably blindsided the hell out of her. Like, sir, what is wrong with you? So... Um, he offered some little bullshit apology or whatever, but of course it was bull. Then they got into the conversation about, um, Chrysanthemum and Chris and how it was like dating friends. And the guy, you know, they didn't seem to see where it was a problem. The guys, of course, were explaining how it was hard in this environment when you're dating people that are that close because you start feeling like, well, you tell one, one thing is going to automatically go to the other and you're supposed to be trying to date and get to know them. And it's almost like if you started dating Chris Anthem, it was almost like, um, um, the other one was now off limits and vice versa. And so it becomes an issue when y'all are really supposed to be focusing on dating each other and um i could see where the guys were coming from like it's one thing if you meet two friends at a club you automatically know that they off limits like okay i gotta talk to one or the other i know i can't talk to both of them i know it's gonna be a problem but when you're in a process like this where the whole purpose is to date as many of these people as as possible then it becomes then it becomes an issue because you've I already said it. You've already eliminated some, automatically taken somebody out of the mix. Then we got on Ron and Alexis and Amber. Well, Alexis was talking, well, we talked about the guys and how the guys had bonded. And we saw all of that with all the crying and stuff that went on down to the lounge, honey. And that, you know, that was great. It was, and it was good to see that. You know, if nothing else, it was good to see these men bonding. You know, I'd love to see it. And it was a great thing. Um,. But Ron and Amber, listen, Ron, you lost all credibility when we sat there and caught you in a bold-faced lie. Ron made the comment about when he said something about him and Amber were going to continue to date after the show. And Amber was like, continue to date? We didn't date like that. And he was like, we went on many dates. And she was like, many dates? He was like, well, I mean a couple of dates. She said, a couple? Well, we went on a date. Sir, how you go from many days to a couple of days to one day? So your whole credibility now is shot. So any any credibility that I was giving you beforehand, I have taken it all away because you clearly lied. And if Amber hadn't checked you, you would have ran with that lie that y'all went out on multiple and many dates. And now I come to find out it was one date. 
Now, I do believe that y'all was talking on the phone, but hell, I feel like all of y'all was talking on the phone. I feel like it was a whole lot of texting going on, but a text conversation crossing over into a date, crossing over into something more, that's two, that's a, that's totally different situations. You talk to people all the time that you never see again. You might meet somebody at the club, exchange phone numbers, y'all talk for a couple of weeks, and y'all never see each other again, okay? So, that doesn't mean anything to me. Um, then we had the conversation about when Alexis was eliminating Ron and how Ron talked to Alexis and Tommy checked him. Tommy was like, in my four seasons of doing this show, I have never seen a man talk to a woman the way you talk to her. It was just rude and unnecessary. He said in the moment he was talking about AJ and he used that same example that I saw in that interview he did. When he was talking about, you know, that he just thought Alexis was better than that. He realized that AJ was just using her and he wasn't really into her like that. But it was still a rude thing to say. And like Alexis said, Alexis was like, that's how I took it too. Like, I didn't take it as he was talking about um, Ron. I mean, AJ. Like, I took it as he was saying it just how everybody else took it. So, I don't know. I don't know, but either way, Ron, after you, like I said, your credibility was shot with me after that whole situation with um, many dates, a couple of dates, one date, okay? Like, I, right, sir, sir, sir. Um, Alexis and AJ. Of course, Alexis felt some kind of way about being eliminated by AJ. You know, she said that, you know, she really thought that her and AJ had clicked and you know, at the end of the day, AJ was like, listen, Kyra's the one who I, I was interested in. Kyra's the one who I was trying to be with. But what we found out was Miss Kyra went out of the country for two weeks. She had a, a pre-planned trip. Um, and she went out of the country for two weeks. And while she was gone, come to find out Ron and Alexis went out on a date. They was kissing and canoodling. Now, AJ, and listen, I'm with AJ 100% on this one. AJ said, listen... You, at the end of this whole process, you didn't choose me. Yes, we were still dating. We were still getting to know each other. But you said you choose you. So if Alexis calls me and it's her birthday and she wants me to take her out, why not? Why am I wrong? Listen, I'm with you. Now, listen, I don't agree with AJ on a whole lot of stuff. But on this one, I was with AJ. Because at the end of the day, Kyra, you was playing games the whole time. You was playing games the whole time. Now, she did say that she Jason was her pick. And when it was obvious that Jason wasn't reciprocating and he didn't, you know, <laughs> and he didn't return it, then that's when she sort of, you know, was giving AJ the, the second glance. So basically, you were the second chance. I mean, you were the second option. You were not her first option. That's what it is. That's what it boils down to. You were not her first option. So now we left on a cliffhanger. On whether Alexis was still interested in dating AJ or not. And that's where the whole episode ended. Tessa couldn't be there. Be Tessa, excuse me, couldn't be there because she tested positive for COVID. Um, I hope it was a false positive. I, hope, I mean, this was taped months ago. Uh, well, weeks ago. And I've seen her out on Instagram and at comedy shows and stuff. So she seems fine and well. So I'm glad that I hope it was a false positive. Or if she was sick, it was a very light, you know. But she does seem to be well. And that was pretty much the first episode. Y'all know they give us the light light in the first episode. You know, that whole Ron situation was a lot. But anyway, so tonight, y'all know I'm just getting caught. I'm still trying to get caught up for my vacation. So tonight is the part two. And um, we're going to get into some other stuff tonight, honey. So y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in those comments. Peace.